Nigel, the backdrop behind us suggests that we're uh, elsewhere today. We're here in Derby and you've got the lads playing cricket very shortly. Yeah, a bit of indoor cricket and five-a-side also. Uh, some, uh, somewhere that we've always come over the years. Uh, brought the Burton lads uh, here quite a few times and, and Derby. And I think we even came with Sheffield United as well. Uh, so it's something that they enjoy for a, a change of scenery, a change of activity. But it's still training, uh, the cricket. And as I say, one team will be playing five-a-side while, while one team uh, team attempts to take on the staff team, uh, but I don't hold out too much hope for them. What are you wanting to get from it? Uh, a little bit of team bonding and everything, uh, just different skills and just everybody, no matter what, if you're very good or not, trying their absolute best to try and win. Who's not involved? Uh, Bailey Cargill, I think, is the only one who's ill. Uh, Flinty's come down, but I'm not sure what batted or bowling he'll be doing uh, with his shoulder. Uh, but yeah, Bailey's the only absentee. Obviously, the injured lads uh, aren't here. Elliot Hewitt and so on, Callum Johnson, Callum McDonald. Uh, and Bailey's got this virus that's been going around for the last few weeks. Will that put him out for Saturday? Don't know, we'll just see how, how he recovers. Uh, I think he was pretty rough yesterday, uh, but you just hope in a few days' rest uh, he might be okay. George Maris, has he got over his breathing difficulties? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll see when he's been bowling a little bit this morning, uh, how, how he is. But uh, Tom checked him over yesterday uh, and said he was OK to train. Uh, you mentioned Aidan Flint. Let's speak a bit more about him. Because as we know, it was the, the headline of the day, him getting into the, the team news prior to kickoff, of course. And... Um, what sort of percentage was he at, actually, on the field, would you say? It's difficult to tell uh, because he had it heavily strapped uh, and uh, it was a sort of game where I think because of the way Notts are with the very skillful players up front, he didn't have a you know a six foot three centre forward knocking him about, uh, which probably helped things. Uh, and it was just a matter of whether he could whether get through the game with the pain and not fall on it or not awkwardly get banged or anything like that, which we managed to get away with. But we thought with the suspensions and the injuries, it was a risk worth taking in that sort of game. How do you plan to manage that heading forward? That's just in his hands and, and Tom, the physio, in terms of uh, when he can train. We're not particularly interested in uh, too much training in the next uh, two or three months. It's all about the 17 games. Nothing else matters. So if he trains the day before a game between now and the end of the season, that's fine with us. You think he'll be all right to carry on as is then? Until there's, it's just this, if he gets a, a whack or falls awkwardly on it, that's the only thing that we're frightened of. But each week that goes by without him sort of getting that, then it strengthens a little bit. Uh, and we should, we're going to try everything to get him through to the end of the season. Let's speak about the opponents, Forest Green Rovers. They've had a really tough time this season. What have you made of their campaign? Yeah, just that. Uh, you know, it wasn't so long ago that they were the outstanding side uh, under Rob Edwards when the, they, were, they were promoted and everybody, I think, thought they would survive. Uh, but having got relegated, they've really struggled this season and find themselves at the wrong end of the table. But you look at the squad on paper... Uh, and still very, very capable. And of course, with Steve Cottrell going in, it gives them the best possible chance. Uh, you know, they've tried a few different managers, some younger ones, and, and now they've appointed Steve, uh, as a few have, you know, Danny Cowley, Carl Robinson or whatever. Uh, I think it, it will improve them as teams without a doubt. Is that a solid an appointment as they could have wished for? Yeah, I, I get the idea sometimes. I know clubs appoint young upcoming coaches and everything, but they've not got an awful lot on the CVs and a lot of experience. So when things don't go according to plan, then it's the experience that you need to get you out of that trouble. Uh, and, you know, it seems to be that, say, those three managers have come back in and you find even going up at Aberdeen, Neil Warnock popping up to Aberdeen now, uh, having had a young manager. Uh, so... It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's it's very difficult to predict. The, the game football now is too is too difficult to predict. You know, you could appoint an experienced manager, a younger one, whatever, uh, and it's just uh, it's, it depends on so many factors whether they're successful or not. Have you come up against Steve Sides before? Oh yeah, over the years, yeah, and we know him quite well, and uh, played against him certainly Birmingham, Bristol City, and things, and always been very well organised, very well drilled, difficult to break down. 